Ezekiel 39, verse 17. Now, Son of Man, thus saith the Lord God, Speak to every feathered fowl and every beast of the field. Now, you, you can't take the Bible literal. Because you get in heresies, like, you know, eating the literal body and blood of Jesus. Now, Ezekiel didn't go out there and say, okay, we're going to have an assembly of all the animals. But he's called to prophesy to the children of Israel, Judah. This is what's going to happen. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on every side to the sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you. Even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel. So this is going to be in the land of Israel. That you may eat the flesh and drink the blood. Now for man it's forbidden. The unclean birds and the unclean animals. That's what they are. He shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, lambs, goats, and bullocks. Those are sacrifices that children of Israel brought to God. All of them fatlings of Bashan. You say, well, why are there rams, lambs, goats, and bullocks in this mighty army? Because they didn't have refrigeration. They didn't have tractor trailer trucks. And when the army moved, they brought the live livestock to feed their troops. And sometimes when they raided the cities, they would take the livestock. And ye shall eat fat, which is forbidden for Israel, but we're not talking to Israel. See, rightly divided, we're speaking to the animals. So I don't know if there's anywhere, and probably somebody, that you can't put your animals on a Levitical diet. But again, these are unclean animals. And drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. So does God ever provide a sacrifice? Yes, to the animals. God gave a sacrifice to man. It's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Upon Calvary's cross. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots. And let's add some horse meat. And there's going to be chariots there. There's going to be the armored vehicles of the time. Or maybe we'll go back to chariots. You know, and they have pictures of it. There are chariots inside the Red Sea today. Left behind. And I would assume that some of the horses and some of the soldiers of Pharaoh's army of Egypt became fish food. With mighty men. With all men of war, saith the Lord God. So there's going to be this great battle assembly of God and he's going to come into the land and he's going to be utterly defeated you don't mess with Israel now America has not attacked Israel but we have an organization that's against Israel 
called the United Nations Assembly in New York City. And we allow the UN to make decisions for all of us that it ought not to be making. We need to take the United Nations, give them a slap across the butt, and tell them, because you're against Israel, get out of our country. We won't have anything to do with you. You lay any hands on Israel. Anybody lays any hands on Israel, you will find the ballistic missiles up your butt. Because there will be two nations. We will protect our nation, and we will protect the land of Israel, their nation. But the stupid Baptists go over Israel and pay the, the, the Catholic Church, which is an enemy of Israel, so they can tell us about the time of Jesus without reading and studying their Bible. I just seen today doing my study, I seen the tomb of Mary. I don't think she had anything that elaborate. I think it's elaborate made by the Catholic Church that worships her above Jesus. And these are the same Baptists. Oh, let's go to Tennessee and see the Ark Encounter and pay money. You're a foolish Baptist. You are a carnal Baptist. You are a Catholic Baptist. And where I got off on that, I don't know. Sometimes the Lord just says, I'll fill them out. I'll say stuff that the other Baptists won't say. Because I know you'll say it, and you don't care what they say or think. And I will set my glory over the heathen. I don't know how I got on that. Sometimes I wonder. God gets his glory. Even if you do not want to glorify God. And all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed. And my hand that has laid upon them. How? Oh, look at that. They're all animal food. What glory does God get in that? He said it. It happens. Well, it's a mean and judgmental God. No, he gives you a warning. Israel is well known, the Jews are well known, the Hebrews are well known by all in the area. They are God's people, and there is something about a curse that curses them and a blessing that blesses them. They know about it. So the house of Israel shall know that I am, I am the Lord their God from the day of from that day forward. Now see, that day, that's a future. That's a prophecy. It has not happened during Ezekiel's time. Some say, is this the battle of Armageddon? I don't think so. It's like it. It shows forth the typology of the, the Armageddon. The heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. So now we're going back to Israel. They are in Babylon because they sinned and trespassed against God. Because they trespassed against me, therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hands of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. And that's what happened in Judah, and that's what happened in Israel. That's what happened to the two and a half tribes on the other side of the Jordan River. Reuben, I think Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh. According to the uncleanness, and go back to Ezekiel, and go back to Jeremiah and Isaiah, and it mentions all the sins. According to their transgressions have they done unto them, have I done unto them, 
Why are they not in Judah now? Why have the Judah been destroyed? Why is Jerusalem been conquered? Because of their sins, their uncleanness, and their iniquity. Why is there a COVID-19 in all the Because your sins, because your iniquities, and because your transgressions against God. And there's not enough preachers preaching the truth about it. They're more interested in preaching, don't get the vaccine rather than believe on Jesus Christ or repent and get right. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob. Now, Ezekiel's in Babylon, the captivity's in Babylon. And through Ezekiel, he's still preaching, you know, doom and gloom for the Israelite, for the heathen. And then he preaches, hey, you're going back home. And we know this happens during Ezra and Nehemiah. Now, during the tribulation period, they don't go into captivity. They run from the Antichrist. Revelation chapter 12, God says he gave them wings to fly. So that's where we're different now. The Antichrist ain't going to put them in captivity. He's going to kill them. And those that survive, they run. And we think Celepetra. We could be wrong. But there is a place prepared by God for his people. Where he's going to feed them. He's going to provide for them. But it's going to be under the penalty of the shadow of the Antichrist. And that's a whole other study when we get there. But listen, if God's people, the Jews, suffer because their sins and iniquity and transpasses, what do you think? Oh, we've been reading about the heathen. And the prideful, arrogant Americans think that nothing's ever going to happen to them while things are happening to them. Oh, you know, if we take the vaccine, the vaccine, we're gonna we're gonna lose our freedom. Try building a playhouse for your child in your backyard without a permit. Try go hunting. Without a permit. Try go fishing, salt water or fresh water or both, without a permit. Try to have a yard sale without a permit. Try to drive without a permit. Try not paying your taxes. What do you mean you're going to lose your freedoms? You've already losing them. Under the Republican party too you have lost your freedom how I got on that one therefore thus saith the Lord God now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob Abraham Isaac Jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel does that sound like God finished for them and will be jealous for my holy name. Again, I, I heard a preacher one time, you know, jealousy is a sin. What's your Bible say to what it just said right there about God? If God is jealous for what Israel does to him, what do you think Jesus does when the church sleeps nakedly adultery with Satan? You know, a lot of the lives they see in church age, they are butt naked in the bed with the devil. And Jesus Christ is outside the door knocking. I ain't coming in there. Oh, come on in. Jesus is Resurrection Sunday. Uh, this year I died on a would be I died on a Tuesday. How do you get Sunday from Tuesday? Got to be a Roman Catholic Good Friday mathematics. <laughs> mm -hmm. After that, 
They have borne their shame. After Ezra and Nehemiah, Israel sinned. They sinned so much that when the Messiah showed up, they had no idea. They had an idea, but they did not want the idea that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. They didn't know who he was. They knew who they was, and they didn't want him. So this is the this passage is not for the Jews today. It's for the future. This is millennium. They're going to bore a lot of shame in the tribulation period. And all their trespasses, whereby they have trespassed against me, when they dwell safely in their land, and that has not happened. Don't count Ezra and Nehemiah, man, they had the Arabians chasing them. Don't take the times of the Maccabees and all that, they had everybody chasing them. Don't take the time of Jesus, they had the Romans chasing them. They had the PLO chasing them. They got Jordan chasing them. They got the Arabians chasing them. That's yet still future. And none made them afraid. That's not now. That wasn't a go. It's a future. Millennium. They're not even going to be afraid of the animals. The animals, the curse, are going to be off. You won't have mattresses. You'll have you'll have the the lion stores. I don't need a new lion to sleep with. I want one with an extra fur. I'm taking that from Daniel. When I have brought them again from the people. And gather them out of the enemy's lands. Plural enemies in plural lands. And sanctified in them. Set apart in them. In the sight of many nations. Why not all nations? Because when Jesus Christ comes. He's going to judge the nations. The sheep nations that help Israel. Go into the millennium. The nations that are goats. That didn't help the Israel. Are going to hell. And the Christians and the Jews and those sheep nations, when we all go into the to the millennium and go into the land, many nations, not all. Then shall they know that I am, I am the Lord their God. How? He's there. Who's there? Jesus. Who is Jesus? He's the Lord their God. What do you mean? He's called Jehovah. Don't listen, Jehovah Witnesses. That's a second advent passage. The only second advent of God coming back is through Jesus. Which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. Because of their sins. But I have gathered them into their own land. I have gathered them. Look at that. They're in Babylon, God says, I delivered them. Now, if God never delivers them, and he will, God would be a liar, and the Bible says God's unable, cannot, will not, and it's impossible for God to lie. So he already wrote, verse 28, in the past tense, though it has not happened. The arrogance of God. Now, this past month, we had two celebrities. I'm not going to mention their names. I don't know if saved the laws. But they, they died. And one of them sent the text off. I can't wait till I went to going to do is going to this one place for his job. Well, a couple of days after that text, before that job was going to happen, he died unexpectedly. Well, the guy's a liar. Because <laughs> he said, oh, but it never happened. 
So I always got to say, Lord willing. If I said I'm going to meet you Saturday at 2 o'clock and whatever reason, I am unable to be there at 2 o'clock Saturday, I am a liar. But when God says, hey, already happened, did not happen, already going to happen, you know it's going to happen because God said it. That's the wonderful of our God. I have gathered them their own land and have left none of them any more there. So all the Jews are going back to the land. Neither will I hide my face anymore from them. That's definitely millennium because God's face is hidden from the nation corporate today. Now, not individually. The Holy Spirit's going out to Jews and the Gentiles and the Greeks. Hey, will you believe on Jesus? Will you believe on Jesus? But as the body of Israel, corporate, God's like, okay, you're just on the shelf right now. I'll come back and deal with you after the 70th week. It's like, go to your room and don't come out of your room till I tell you to come out of your room. And when I tell you to come, okay, then, well, until then, I don't want to see your face. And you're not going to see my face. You a bad boy. And that's the state of condition that Israel is in right now. They're a bad boy. One day God's going to open up that bedroom door. All right, come on now. Neither will I hide my faith anymore from them. That's the future. For I have pure, poured out my spirit, the Holy Spirit, upon the house of Israel. That is not now. Save the Lord God. 